What is up guys, it's Speed here, and today we're gonna be watching a Guardian 4 Dota 2 match. I just love doing this, honestly, it's, I would say like a top 3 thing in Dota for me. I love making item builds, um, I love just reading new patches, and then I would say number 3 is just watching really low MMR Dota. It always just, uh, I don't know, it just makes me laugh. So, yeah, I'm like, hey, why not record it? I'm, I do this for fun occasionally anyways. <laughs> I'm a bit weird, you know, you know how it is, but I'm doing it for fun anyway, so hopefully we'll learn some things, right? Obviously, when I'm watching these games, I'm going to be giving tidbits of knowledge that apply to absolutely every bracket. So it doesn't matter what bracket you're in, don't feel like, oh, this is a Guardian 4 or 5 average game. Surely I can't learn from its speed. Absolutely you can. Just because their item builds are completely wrong doesn't mean I can't teach you about mechanics, positioning, target priority, and everything of the sorts. So... Smash that like button. Let's get this video to 80,000 likes. On the last video, we got 2,000, so that's only 78,000 more likes, which I think is very doable. So if you see that the video isn't at 80,000 likes, just, you know, hit it. And last but not least, before we hop into it, click the link down below to sign up for GameLeap.com. The reason why you guys should consider it is if you like the YouTube content here, but you're more focused on gaining MMR, like you're hardcore want to get to the next rank, I recommend you sign up to GameLeap.com where I go in-depth about various heroes. Recently, I did a live co-op coaching session, it was not one-on-one -on -one with the player, and I really related more to everyone watching, not just the one guy. So if you're interested in that, you wanna learn from live coaching sessions, other meta videos that I talk about, and a ton of hero courses we have over there, curated by pro players, such as your boy Speed, click the link down below, and I hope to see you guys there. All right, and let's get right into it. So, you know, th the first thing you always have to do is go through the item builds and try to understand where people are coming from. So we got the Willow with the stick against the Skywrath, pretty understandable. Shaman Boots, actually a reasonable hero to buy boots on. Wraith King in the safe lane with the gloves of haste tangos. That's probably one of the worst things you could buy in the game. Uh, but Comero de Travaco thinks it's good. You have a uh, Jeb. I guess that's the brother of Seb. Uh, you have Jeb on the bristle back. I'm surprised Seb wouldn't coach him to buy better items than zero regen uh yeah I, I don't know seb you gotta you gotta get back to your brother and then finally well for the dire we have thomas shelby on the medusa picking up the orb of venom quelling blade with a clarity i mean how could you play medusa without a clarity i like that that would be ridiculous it's actually leaning against a slark mid but that orb of venom this is so good for everyone who doesn't know that I'm kidding, I'm, I'm kidding, please don't buy this item on Rage Shows, please don't do it, it's so bad. How do you think it's good? Just read the numbers, it doesn't do anything, it's 300 gold, like that's so much gold. But okay, decent snake usage, getting denied, but let's keep going with the items, uh, as that's my favorite part. We got the Slark, okay, uh, not perfect, I would rather see him have a branch to eat a tango and a fairy fire for outplays, but that's alright. No Talisman Tango, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Boots Quelling... Okay, for an offlaner, this is not what I would go. You know, this is a build I would go if I'm roaming, but I'm not roaming, so I wouldn't want to do this. It's just going to make you trade bad. You have Spectre with three Tengus. Okay, this build's fine. And finally, we got the Lich, who went Boots of Speed, which is actually okay. I mean, considering they're renamed after me, I'll never hate you for actually rushing this item. All right, so I must admit, I mean, Commodore, if you're watching this, my man, this build is utter trash. He, so he's rushing an armlet, um, and... Something I'm actually considering doing in the near future, you guys could let me know in the comment section down below if you think this is a good idea or not, but I'm considering watching a medium MMR pub like Archon Legend and then comparing it to a pro match and talking about all the farming differences that they have, like the farming inefficiencies that separate, you know, a legend safe laner uh, from in a immortal. I might even do with AM. I know AM I think is a little bit popular right now. Maybe Spectre as well because Spectre is very popular. So we'll talk about all the efficiencies. That could be a good video, but I don't know how this guy came up with this build. Like, He's going armlet and he has two points in stun? Like, the stun scales, it scales okay, but you usually just want to jungle, right? Like, the whole purpose of Wraith King is to go jungle. You just, like, build up a bunch of skeletons and then yeet to the jungle, but... My man Commodore is manning up. Alright, the next thing I want to look at, I saw this Slurk making the play. I mean, he was getting in and honestly, it's kind of a, kind of a good play. So he's running up to the Deuce here. Oh my god. Ugh! How do you just pounce like that? Y you need pounce to... Like, the reason you want to save Pounce is so you can use it later on to disengage and, and get damage. And then he randomly commits his Q, which is totally unnecessary here. The attack moving is a 1 out of 10. And whoa, what do you know? He's gonna die. Oh my god, he led with his ulti? Like, I wonder... I'm just gonna put this out there, guys. I wonder if he hadn't used Pounce and Q, how this fight would have turned out. For some reason, I think it would have went a lot better and he probably wouldn't die here. But honestly, I like the fact that he's running at the enemy team. But I really... Uh, don't like how he's casting his spells because what he did there is actually super high MMR. Like, think about 
Think about the impact that that could have had if he bought like uh, better items too, like I wish he had like a stick or something. And then he casted his spells properly and just kind of baited them over to him then healed. He could outplay them so hard and probably kill all three of them if he played it perfectly. Like by regening, 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 you know, kiting in, kiting out. Uh, but yeah, instead he just does this garbage. Okay, at least he bought an item. Once again, I, I would like to see him buy one. Does this dude just not have a point of mana shield? Excuse me? What? How do you not think I bought a mana shield and where are your stats? Buy a wand and a rape band. <laughs> Thomas Shelby, my man. This clan should fire him. Kick him out of the clan. I don't know what he's doing. All right, next up, we have the Skywrath Mage. And of course, you know, of course he's going to go a bit like this. The Mana Boots Rush. Wow. Wow. It's not like you could buy a Veil. Let me type this in to show you. A Veil for $15.25. I actually said the price wrong in a different video. Sorry, guys, about that. But for $15.25, you can have a Veil that is built from a Bassi, which is good for Skywrath. Right? Just a casual uh, early on Sage Mask is good for the landing stage. Then you can buy a crown, which is also good. And then you can finish it up with the recipe, which is cheap. Or you could buy at least just another three gnolls. Like, literally, think about that, guys. The arcane boots are worth 1400. Knoll talismans are worth 510. You nearly can buy three. Just keep that in mind. And the, the clear reason why you want to do this is because your Q is multiplied based off int. Right? It's multiplied based off int. So, you would rather have more int. Also, these give mana regen now, which makes it pretty dang good. And finally, having multiple gnolls also makes you tankier. So, yeah, that's just an important thing to know. So, it looks like the Bristleback is having a pretty good game. Actually, Bracer Wand? Okay, okay. Even pressuring the Spectre? Is he smurfing? No, he's not. What? Why <laughs> I? Jeb! Jeb, this is so good. What the heck is he doing? Like, all he has to do, all Jeb has to do here. And guys, this applies if you're Legend Ancient, I don't care. Even if the creep wave is right here, zone Chow off the lane, say Chow, and then run back to the creep wave and deny the whole wave. What is this? He's also just randomly hits the tower. He's like, yeah, maybe I want to siege. What the? What in the world, Jeb? Gosh dang it. Now where is he going? Make up your mind. Okay, buys the Vitality Booster over the Ring of Health. Uh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> you don't need HP if you have no HP. It's pretty bad. Oh, the Snake's Trap. Wow. Picks up a salve. Please drop your stat items. Put your stat items in your backpack. No! <laughs> Jeb, 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 put your vitality booster away when you're popping your salve. It gives you significantly more HP. For anyone who doesn't know, yeah, it will give you more HP. So now, once again, Jeb is going deep. As I said earlier, um, guys, just to be clear, you might be like, oh, how do I win this lane speed? How do I stomp the Spectre right now? What you do is you go on the Spectre. You, you can push in the wave with your quills, harass them a little bit. Then you side pull. Right? The reason for this is that when you side pull, what you do is you pull your creep wave over, then you go get your creep wave, right? The one you want to farm. You get the opponent's creep wave, I should say. You pull it over to the large camp, and you farm it here. Why do you do that? Because if you contest the wave here, it's not easy to bully them. But if you contest the wave here, it's pretty dang easy to bully them off the wave. So that's how you can push it in, bring it back, and it's the best way to stomp pubs, especially when you get ahead in your laning stage. So... That's what Jeb should be doing. We'll kind of just watch it again one more time. I don't know where he's going. He's just walking in circles. Just like, yeah, I, don't, I didn't want to farm that creep wave. It's fine. You know, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to get an XP or gold lead. That's in Dota. Pfft, no. Get running down the ledge. I'm actually cool with this. He's over committing pretty hard, though. Pop the self. Run, Jeb, run. Yeah, if he was just full HP, he would never die. It's that simple. I don't know why he keeps diving the tower. If he was just constantly full HP. <laughs> Jeez, he mid. <laughs> Oh, what the heck? What is wrong with you people? What is wrong? Like, come on. Easy mid. Is this even that far behind on net worth? Alright, alright, yeah. She's pretty far behind. This Slark is stomping. I doubt he's a smurf, though. There's no way. Yeah, he's not. He's definitely not a smurf. Because, like, what is this item build? Orbit Mask. <laughs> you have regen. Just run away. <laughs> and you regen. Why do you need a Orbit Mask? Like, your hero naturally regens. It doesn't make any sense. You don't need to man up. This hero doesn't man up. All right, so the Slark is actually kind of making a play top here. And I want to talk about the map movement because this is something I mentioned in my misconception video. I think that, wait, that came out, what, today? I can't even remember. Maybe it came, not today, yesterday? I don't know, guys. But basically, I made a video talking about Dodo misconceptions. And what I said is that safe laners or anyone in general can actually farm mid. Now, if, let's look at the mid lane. Why do I think this is so important? And trust me, guys, what you're about to see in this game also happens in Ancient. It happens in Legend, Archon, Crusader. If I forgot your rank, your rank as well. Divine, Immortal. It happens in Dota. And what that is, is both of the mid laners rotate out of their lane, and then someone else can farm it. But no one does. 
No one does. For some reason, the only time people go mid in these pubs is if they're taking a 5 on 5 fight. I don't know why people are so hesitant to farm it. And then Thomas Shelby, here he comes with the orb of venom! He scalps out the Slark and he's stealing farm from the Wraith King. I like to do that too. When I'm playing mid, I like to uh, steal farm from my Wraith King and then siege a tier 1 tower 60 minutes into the game. That's really, really good for smalling. But hey, Jeb actually gets into mid farm. Even Spectre looks like he's shifting over here. I feel like the Spectre's builds and such were good, but like his ability to last hit and position in lane was so bad that it just made him a hard game. And yeah, once again, I don't know why he didn't farm the mid wave. Like, why are people so anti mid wave? All right, actually, TB's mid. Let's go, babe. All right, let's talk about one more mid game fight, then we'll head over to the end game. So, huge pounds comes out from Eduard. Is that like short for Eduardo? I think it is. I think it is. But he's going to kite out here, right? Good decision. Kites out with the pounce. Hey, he didn't overcommit pounce there. That's great. Sniping the courier, you know, maybe a bit questionable. Once again, not a huge fan of casting Dark Pact uh, like that. In this case, it ends up working out. And by the way, this Diffusal item is really, really good this game. Uh, I once again wish he had a wand. Like, Slark has mana problems. Like, how could this guy have 3,000 matches and seemingly have played a lot of Slark based on the fact that he's buying Diffusal and still not buy a magic wand? How do you not run out of mana? How is that possible? Now he's just going on Jeb. Really bad map awareness. The reason why I say that and that is clear is because this is a hard skill, but I could see it coming. And you guys have to ask yourself the question, did you see the Shaman or the Willow coming? So when he's starting to hit this bristle, you clearly see the Shaman on the map. Why is that? Because Slark has really good night vision. And because Slark has really good night vision, you can see people from really far away in the night. That's pretty self-explanatory. And so uh, he should have ran away. Should have ran away, but he didn't. Uh, and he dies because of it. Gets spit on by Jeb. I mean, this is why he won a TI after all. We had the same thing stands, guys. Please, for the love of the Lord, if you are in this bracket and you are stuck, you are in Herald, Guardian, Archon, I do not care. If you're in round that average, pick a scaling hero and a hero that can farm relatively well. I'm not saying you have to pick Alchemist 4 or 5 or 3 or 2 or 1, but pick a hero that can scale relatively well and look for the farm that is mid. If it's not mid, it's bottom. If it's not bottom, it's mid. And and like and the same thing applies to top. Look around the map. The farm is there. In every game? No, of course, Dota has exceptions. But in majority of games, this will be the case, right? And if, if Chow looked for this more often, he would be able to get it, um, especially when it's safe. Now, that was a dangerous wave to push. This enemy team is death balling. Holy, look at this. <laughs> How do they even synergize this? Well, I'm honestly shocked. Uh, Shadow Shaman, you have an Aether Lens. You might want to make that into your Aether Lens, but he's not. Nonetheless, uh, really cool smoke gank. Oh, this is a classic low of Amar Shaman. I hate this build so much. I honestly despise this build. It just basically says, yeah, I don't care about pushing in waves. Max Hex, which is fine. You can max Hex after after Aether Shock. Like, I'm cool with that, but Max Hex, Max Shackles, I despise. Ugh, I, I despise. Whoa, look at his ward. Look at his warding by the Shaman. So good. I still don't know why he doesn't have the Aether Lens, though. I have a feeling he's just totally forgotten and doesn't have the awareness to look at his items in his backpack, which frankly is is a big deal because now here, uh, instead of being able to cast his stuff from here and stay away from the Lich Ult, he has to walk up way too close, which is going to get him absolutely destroyed by this Lich Ult, uh, which he seemingly did not care about, neither did the Medusa. And now Slark is about to put in work. Actually, that was a great Willow ulti, but still, I think the Slark's about to clean up. Uh oh, Wraith King comes over though. If this guy just didn't waste his gold on a Morbid Mask and learn to kite in and out, he would carry these games so hard. Like, that's the thing about this Slark. I bet he looks at this game, he's like, I played so well. Uh, my team is so bad. <laughs> Sorry, I... All right, getting into the late game here, we have the very impressive 167 uh, CS by the Medusa. Guys, let's clap it up. 167 at 33. Woo! By the way, guys, this is all sarcasm for anyone who's watching. Obviously, when I say this stuff and I'm joking around, it's a joke. I don't hate these people. I'm making fun of them as a joke. I hope no one takes it too seriously because sometimes there's comments like, oh, speed, like, why are you so negative? Why are you so negative? It's a joke. I'm trying to help you guys see your mistakes and get better. Frankly, if someone did this to me uh, when I was a more, it would be a blessing, right? It would be a blessing because it's going to help you see your mistakes. So I do wish the best for everyone in this game. Gucci gang, ciao. Gucci gang, taliba, uh, peanut. Big shout out to Peanut from the Charlie uh, Charlie Brown series. Big shout out to Peanut. Edward, especially my man Jeb and Commodore Dade uh, Traveco. You know, like, hey, I love them all. They're my brothers now, right? We're chill. So just keep that in mind. 
Alright, so I want to look at this next fight perspective from the perspective of the Spectre. So he goes in here, he... Oh, wow, okay, great blink by the Shaman. Dude, the Shaman's been putting in work this game. Okay, oh, no. Oh, he wasted his Manta. Oh. And this is one of those things where people would say, oh, it's fine, he, he had a Manta out of the route. He never had to be there in the first place, right? Him having to use that Manta completely loses his ability to kill a hero like Shaman or Medusa or man up to a Wraith King, right? Now, he's so weak. Like, it is insane how weak he is compared to... Uh, when he has Manta, because Spectre Mantas are particularly strong. So he gets gone on here, he's just dead. Couldn't even get his haunt off. Frankly, I don't know why he didn't haunt at all. Uh, it seems like a weird thing to do. So when should he haunt, you may ask? Well, I would say right here. When he gets put in the root, he could just haunt. Um, and start dealing damage. He could have even haunted, let's go a little bit further back. He could have also haunted, um, right here. Right when his teammates get gone on, he can haunt. It's a bit early. Like, I'm not a huge fan of this one, but at least if you know that a hero like Shaman has a blink, Oh my god, ah! But if you know a hero like Shaman has a blink, then you can haunt to try to cancel it, right? It's a, it's not a bad idea. It's gonna give you vision of the other heroes coming into the fight anyway, so it's pretty value. Finally, we have the Lich. Dude, like this is why you don't build Ags. It's 33 minutes into the game. It's like a super close game where they're down a Rax and my man's just halfway to an Ags. Gotta load the Staff of Wizardry, it's really gonna help you win the fight. Didn't, wouldn't want a Glimmer Cape to save your Spectre or anything like that. All right, we're going to see some top tier base defense from the Lich here. I, all I really want to see is whether or not he puts himself in a position where he could die. So a couple things to consider. No blink on Wraith King, no blink on Willow. So that means all you have to do is consider the stun range. So, okay, walks up here. Uh, it's, in my opinion, you do not, you really do not want to glyph and Lich shield at the same time. So definitely, I don't, it was probably just a team miscommunication thing or obviously they're not communicating at all, but <laughs> uh, it's definitely something. Okay, so here you should shield there. Okay, that's a good Lich shield, but shield someone oh my god this this bristle that was such a late shield this is one of those things where you can't afford to waste your spell like this once again guys dota is all about the small things right you can't you can't dismiss something as as like this that might to the average player in my opinion seem inconsequential this is a huge mistake in my my opinion so as he's walking in here he gets into base once he touches the top of this fountain bristle can't kill him anymore it's impossible right the, the old bristle yeah he could because the bristle could like turn around on the fountain but they got rid of that bristle can't do that fountain nonsense so once he gets to here he's safe all he should do is actually pull the bristle in him casting his w is not only unnecessary it's a waste because now he can't save a teammate with it if it's needed and he doesn't focus on pulling the bristle into the fountain which is frankly the only way they can win this fight uh, so yeah, it was a pretty big throw because now he loses all that time where the Bristle actually could have straight up died to the Fountain, as it now has Fury Swipes or whatever. Yeah, like the Tower Fury Swipes, which we can see here. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's going to be about the end of this video. I think it ends in a minute or so. Um, I really did like making these. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. You can let me know in the comment section down below what you thought. And uh, yeah, I'll... I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got to see if my man Commodore ends up living. I mean, uh, yeah, Commodore Travaco. So he goes down. Are the boys even going to help him? What? He's got the he's got the armlet. He's about to toggle. You know he's about to eat this up. Hit the Slark. Ooh, stunning when the guy's shackled. Not needed, but okay. I mean, Commodore's a beast. You know for a fact my man is in. However, 169 CS. Uh, the problem with 169 CS on Wraith King is you literally could get that at minute, like, uh, like minute... 14 15 if you're like having the best game of your life uh which is you know that, that that's all i'm saying i would say uh commodore is maybe a eh, you know 17 or 16 minutes late on his timings but that's all right <laughs> thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did please do like and subscribe but uh what i've been doing on the main game lease site before you head out last thing just to notify if you're not signed up yet you're missing out on uh, two videos i just made where i talk about pros and hard games so this is something i haven't done on youtube before uh, or at least specifically done on YouTube before, where I look at a game where a pro specifically had a hard time and what they do in hard matches. So if you feel like your side lanes are losing, right? Your teammates are just feeding, you don't know what to do. Well, what you should do is sign up for the Game League website because that's what these videos teach you about. How do you deal with a bad team? What do you do when you have a hard lane and such? And therefore, consider signing up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and peace.